Hello everybody, I am Dr. Boz and we are live on Sunday night here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I am home, sleeping in my own bed, not in a hotel room, so that helps everything. <laughs> Welcome to Sunday night. We are going to start with some uh, staples that we do on this channel and that is we check numbers. We are not just about eating foods that say they're keto. We are about making sure the chemistry inside your system is keto chemistry. So while I check my numbers, uh, I love seeing where you guys are from. Uh, and I see several people chirping in from Texas, which is where I spent the last week, uh, actually a couple weeks, uh, uh, looking around Texas, but also learning about Texas and um, had, had quite, a, quite a steep education, actually. <laughs> All right, so this is the meter that is the purple one, checking for the ketones. If you can see that little flashing uh, drip, that just means the monitor is ready. Hey, thanks for telling me the sound is good. That's always been a part of my puzzle is to get the sound and the uh, um, internet and the slides all working correctly. All right, so we've got some glucose coming at you and the ketones just came through. So 86 and 2.2. I am about uh, 24 hours into my fast. And I do that every week, not just because it's fun. I don't think fasting is fun, uh, but it really is about stimulating excellent metabolic health. I do a lot of teaching about this. And if you're looking for the deepest dive into the ketogenic uh, education, uh, I have a book coming, but it's not ready yet. The content from the book, however, is in the... Um, is in the, um, I'm gonna make sure this is flowing like it's supposed to, uh, is in a online course that I am very thankful I had uh, the space and time to do. Uh, the online course was not planned as much as, um, I mean, it turned out to be an amazing success. And if you're pecking around YouTube and are looking for a very efficient, succinct way to not just play keto, but really take keto to the level of Keto Chemistry, which is what we do here on the Dr. Boz channel. Um, you will love uh, that uh, course. It is in the show notes. Uh, you can also just go to bozmd.com and um, click on shop <laughs> or click on the shop. So uh, this uh, is what I'm trying this week. Each week I try to do something that uh, teaches about my fast, but also shows you what my numbers do in an hour. Um, so I have uh, just had this um, cucumber lemon product hit the market. And again, ketone supplements are not for uh, the full journey of keto. It is to get to a place where you don't need these. But as an internal medicine physician, I spend a lot of time with folks that have a really broken metabolism. We know there is so much um, uh, benefit when they're ketones are adapted. When they get to numbers like I just showed you, we can repair a brain faster, we can fight off infection better. Uh, watching to see how well the human body responds when it's not so toxic in sugar. And to transition that can be a little tough. So I have put out, put out some products. This one has a really interesting story behind it because I have teenagers. And if you ever take on the nightmare of a product, which I'm not sure I'd ever do again, but I have done it. Um, uh, the nightmare of tasting about a million different flavors before you say, okay, that's the one that is the, the one we're going to go with. And I learned that once I break it down to about the final four or five flavors to take it home to teenagers and see which ones disappear the most. And I have three sons and an adopted daughter from who's like orphaned from, <laughs> from the COVID. She's from China and if she can't go home. And so we have made sure to take good care of her. She's heading off to college this next week. Um, but I brought home some taste testing uh, over this past winter. And one of the ones I brought home was the cucumber lemonade. I wasn't planning on making three flavors because each flavor is expensive. But um, amazingly, uh, I had... Um, I not only had some samples, I had a connection with the local wrestling team. And um, I have three sons. I, as I was saying, the youngest son comes home in the second grade and says, Mom, I want to be a wrestler. 
and I tell him, you must be confused. We don't do that in our family. <laughs> we do not wrestle. <laughs> and for a whole year, this little second grader asked me to go out for wrestling. I tried convincing him that's just not what we do. <laughs> and he, anyway, so I thought, okay, we're just gonna take him to a couple of matches and I'm sure this sport will show him why he's not a wrestler. But I don't know, the youngest of three boys and oh my goodness, he is just a little go-getter. Uh, red-headed, left-handed, completely wired different than the other two. And oh my goodness, he loved it. <laughs> he loved wrestling. So he is now, this past Chris, this past winter, he was 13 and was on the wrestling team here. Uh, and I befriended the coach because this is the part of wrestling that I didn't want, which is teenagers cutting weight by doing disgusting things like spitting in a can or... Um, <laughs> You know, I don't know, there's all kinds of weird things that wrestlers do to make weight. So I took the samples to the wrestling team and I thought for sure they were gonna pick the chocolate flavor that they would like, but there was a couple of wrestlers who said, that is my favorite. And so I, I, then I thought, oh, he'll never remember. But sure enough, every time I'd come to pick up my son from wrestling, he'd ask me, when is that, when is that cucumber lemon? That's the one I want. When is that cucumber lemon <laughs> coming out? And of course, we had taught all about cutting weight through enhancing your metabolism. Uh, there is a huge amount of data that shows we can really um, um, help their brains continue to develop, and especially as the mom of a teenage boy, I do not want him cutting weight by strictly cutting calories for four or five days on end to make the weight that he's registered for. Instead, I want them using the best metabolic science to get at the right weight they belong at and keep that body lean and efficient. Uh, not only is that helpful for his wrestling, but teenagers, their brain development is super important. There is, they are on a trajectory. so. Um, when it came right down to it, the funds were tight to do a third, <laughs> to do a third flavor. So I only did a small batch, but this is it. It's out there, and I am hopeful that I can uh, launch this uh, and have it as uh, a sponsor for that wrestling team this upcoming wrestling season. We'll see how that works out. But uh, that's what I'm drinking tonight: is cucumber lemon in the name of the wrestling team, and not cutting weight by spitting. Mm. Anyway, I have a really great show for you tonight. I have a couple of things that I've been working on. I'm actually totally nervous that I am not going to, that I'm going to get all of what I want to say associated with this topic because I've had this on the shelf for a long time. I actually um, attempted to, to do it about two months ago. And I felt, oh, it's just not ready. I need a little more time to study the information, to just practice it. And I'm ready to do it in, in part because I've had some help with uh, my team setting up these beautiful slides that I think will really help you see what it is that I see. Um, so we are going to uh, hop over to the lesson pretty quickly here. And um, I think it's going to take us a good 30 minutes to get through it, but I really think you're going to love it. Um, before I hop over there, I just want to give a shout outs to uh, the people who have uh, churned uh, chirped in and my uh, folks that do um, do come every Sunday and join me. It's just such an honor to see them week after week, knowing that they're getting uh, a benefit uh, and that they're learning and they're teaching the people around them. And I've just had, um, I just want to say thank you for showing up on Sundays. Um, as usual, we will we will get to the uh, end of this and I'll try to stay afterwards and do some live chatting with those that stick around to the end. So if you're joining me live and you have some questions, I'll try to do a lot of those either at the end as we talk through them. But if we run over time, I'll stick around and try to answer them with my, my keyboard. All right. So in the name of our, um, our topic. Okay. Before I go over to the slides, I'm going to set up the, I'm going to set up the topic. So as you look at the um, some of the questions that I get and a lot of what I've tried to put chapters of this next book uh, addressing the most common questions uh, for the ketogenic diet and not just um, much like the introductory story from Grandma Rose in any way you can. It was a very inspiring story where 
people who thought the ketogenic diet was just for weight loss, I, I really walked you through how this 71-year-old woman uh, whose brain was like a zombie, you know, had keto, chemo brain, not keto brain, chemo, had had chemotherapy, had a terrifically uh, rotten report with her cancer, um, and we took her at 71 through a ketogenic diet. Uh, the book lasts about a year, the story in the book lasts about a year, but it really takes you through not just the science about what was happening inside that ketogenic diet, but it gets you past that first connection where people say, oh, the ketogenic diet is for weight loss. Yeah, you can lose some weight, but that if that's all you're doing it for, you're really missing out. Um, why do I do this every week? Why do I post my numbers? Why do I um, say you can't be a patient unless you've taken the course? I really need you educated about that ketogenic journey. And it is amazing to me that once they're educated, often they don't need to see me. <laughs> they, they get this. Um, and one of those questions that comes up again and again is what happens with cholesterol? I have a couple more lessons coming ahead on cholesterol, but today's cholesterol is what is it that we should be paying attention to when patients are on a ketogenic journey, or more importantly, just in health? What health markers inside our body should be monitored, and how does that relate back to uh, the, the process of improving the types of fat that you uh, consume, as well as monitoring how your body is processing those fats and how they're using fat to repair their brain, their bone marrow, and their red blood cells. So let's get over to the uh, um, the slides here. And um, this is a red blood cell. Uh, and you're going to see that <clears throat> on this uh this lecture, I am going to use this red blood cell to teach you that when slides, or excuse me, when patients have um, a, a curiosity about how well their body is doing, um, there are some things I can do that would look back over a 10-year course to see how inflamed is their body, how hardened are the arteries heading towards their heart, how calcified is their system. And that gets me a great snapshot backwards. Um, I can also do a couple of blood tests that look at how well are their sugars doing over the last three months. And it's a one-time test in the clinic that I can do every three to four months because those red blood cells are what we're testing. And it looks at how sticky they are, how much sugar have those red blood cells been exposed to. What we're going to talk about tonight is... In this red blood cell, we have a crop of them in our system right now, and they range from red blood cells that are a few hours old to over three months old. But if we peel back the uh, skin on your red blood cell, the, the, the biphospholipid layer, you would find that inside that red blood cell is uh, a, a, a layer of fat. And that layer of fat that is the lining that kind of outlines and keeps the shape of this red blood cell is made up of the fats that are in your system. By looking at the red blood cells that are in your circulation right now, we can take a very good snapshot of how well your system is processing fats and what fats are doing once they get in your system, uh, whether or not they're becoming the fats we don't want, like trans fats, uh, whether or not you're having an excessive amount of saturated fat that is, I think, very educational, and let's get to it. I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> All right, so this is a red blood cell, and if you look very carefully, uh, you're going to see that that red blood cell, we blow that up into uh, these uh, biphospholipids uh, that I've drawn for you that have the sphere, which is the part of the molecule that uh, is on the outside of the cell, but then those kind of tails <laughs> is the fatty part. The sphere is the water-loving part, but the tails or the legs of these little characters is the fatty part that um, comes from the different types of food that you eat, as well as what your chemistry is doing on the inside of your system. So that sounds a little complicated. Don't run away. We're going to break this down. So let's take a closer look. We're going to start with the devil, and he was not picked by accident. Uh, we're going to look closer at what happens when you eat 
pig products or animal products. We're going to look at those avocados. We're going to look at fish. Uh, and we're going to look at carbohydrates. That's what that uh, little smiley face is there, is, is a sucker a full, full of sugar. We're going to study some eggs. And we're going to use these as uh, representations of different types of fat that you can find in your red blood cells. That if you uh, watch to see, Doc, I've been on the ketogenic diet for six months. How is my cholesterol? And as we get a flash of a cholesterol panel done, it does not answer the question of, is that cholesterol predicting heart disease or what I like to think of as stiff uh, cell linings? We're going to talk about that before we get done, too. Uh, those stiff cell linings are going to be a predictor of broken brains, broken um, or stiff blood vessels, uh, broken skin cells, broken uh, hormone cells. Uh, and as you watch to see what these fats do in circulation, uh, it does start with what are you eating and what else is your body doing while you eat. All right, so let's get started. We're going to unpack this because it probably sounds confusing, but if you've been around the channel long enough, you know we're going to break this down. So step one, we're just going to name these. Uh, the devil <laughs> is called the trans fats. We're going to use sugar as our saturated fats, and we'll explain that in just a minute. We've got our avocado seed that is a monounsaturated fat, and we've got our omega-3 uh, and omega-6s, which are part of our um, polyunsaturated fats. Again, uh, the saturated fats are divided into two parts, a MUFA, which are our monounsaturated fats, and PUFA. We're going we're gonna to break that down for you. As you look at the monounsaturated fatty acids and the polyunsaturated fatty acids, I just want you to remember that those are all under the banner of your unsaturated fats. And these are chemistry words, but they get translated into the world and into labels. And unfortunately, because that conversation has a rift in what the label is saying and what the body's chemistry is doing, uh, people have uh, take away the wrong messages before um, they and then make decisions based on, based on the wrong assumptions. So, all right, let's begin with looking at um, saturated fats. So again, saturated fat, uh, I use uh, the representation here of a sucker, a sucker made from sugar. And that is because when you see the word saturated fats, if you look, where did it come from? Saturated fats within our body uh, are made by our body and we consume them, but they are not the same thing. So let me try that again. When your body, uh, ha your body has this list of fats that we just went through, some of them your body cannot make and other ones your body can make. Saturated fats are part of the uh, fat profile that your system can make. And where do the carbon units, where do, where do these uh, sources of energy, otherwise called food, where does it come from? Very highly linked to a high sugar or high carbohydrate diet. When you want to see who has the highest number of saturated fats in their body, in their red blood cells, you look for how high is their carbon from, how high is their consumption from sugar from carbohydrates. So let's just take a close. I want you to look carefully at that uh, little red blood cell and you can see those little twinkles go along. Those are all the little lipids that are made from saturated fats. That if we would break down that cell and we would look at it under our machines that separate out which fats are unsaturated, which ones are fat saturated, which ones are trans fats, the saturated fats have an origin highly linked to the foods that are high in carbohydrates. And this is a huge misconception to the labels you read uh, saying this product is high in saturated fats. Um, you'll see that when you try to make a red blood cell, if you're inside the deep parts of your bone marrow where you're making red blood cells, white blood cells, and some platelets, it's going to use the fats that have come in through the body and been processed to build this uh, outside layer or this skin of your red blood cells. As that red blood cell processes, uh, you will uh, see a one of each of these little four-ish 
options uh, come into play for making your skin of your red blood cell. Okay, let's keep going here. We're going to talk about unsaturated fats. These are also called monounsaturated fats. If you get into the geek side of fats, you can see them called MUFAs. But most importantly, I hear keto people saying, I just eat the healthy fats. I eat avocados. I don't have steak. I don't have uh, pork chops. I don't have bacon. I just eat things like olives and avocados. And I'm like, that's going to not play forward very well. Uh, first of all, monounsaturated fats uh, are not one of the essential fats. Uh, there, there are... Um, um, there are essential, an essential fat means that your body can't make it. Your body can only get it through food. And monounsaturated fats actually can be made by your body. You can consume them. That's why I have an avocado here. I actually started with an olive, but nobody recognized it as an olive. So an avocado or an olive are very, they have a great marketing team that everybody says, oh, these are the healthy fats. This is that... Um, Mediterranean diet that is high in seed oils that are from avocados or uh, olive oil. And indeed, those fats are um, on the spectrum of good versus bad. They stay on the good side. But you can make them. When you look at these, um, you're going to see our little twinkles of avocado or monounsaturated fats uh, twinkle across that skin lining for the red blood cell. And some of those fats came from what you ate. But others, your body said, hey, we need some monounsaturated fats and we're going to make it. It is not essential. You can live without them. All right, so let's keep going here because this does get better. So here was our inside our bone marrow. We had our, our uh, saturated fats, which could come from pigs or cows or bacon, but they often are associated with high sugar. And that was our first layer of our red blood cells. And next we added in our monounsaturated fats, which are from healthy things like avocados and olives. So here we have two of them populating the insides of those red blood cells. <clears throat> and we're back to our drawing board here saying, all right, we've covered um, saturated. Uh, we are now going to go to the unsaturated fats uh, that are called polyunsaturated fatty acids. And if you get into the geek world or if you take biochemistry in medical school, this is where they say PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Um, but really, it is um, uh, the PUFA or omega-6 uh, fats are one of the, um, you can actually see our little, our little twinkles across there saying those are all derived from, if you, if you study the carbons of where did, that, where did those fats inside the red blood cell come from, the fats came, or the carbons, they were built from the foods that were in solid fat at room temperature, uh, like lard, like tallow. This is where bacon, and uh, that's why I have a pig, because bacon and a ketogenic diet are commonly talked about. And if you're new to the ketogenic diet, you will often get the attack of the, the onlooker to say, you can't eat that bacon. It's going to give you heart disease. And I'm here to say, don't be so quick to say that. When you have polyunsaturated fats, otherwise called omega-6 fats, and they come from animal products. We are mammals. We will, we will eat them from animals and they will become part of our saturated or, or polyunsaturated fats. And it really matters that when you eat that bacon, when you eat that pork or beef, that you do it without a bunch of sugars. So uh, here's just uh, another place where I'm showing you to remember that PUFA is the omega-6. Uh, what I really want you to look at, though, is when you look at these carbohydrates, this is uh, our representation on the Dr. Boz channel for carbs. They're little square, rhomboid, red folks. And when you eat that bacon, but you put some maple syrup on it, or you put it with a bunch of toast, or you have it with cereal, you have that carbohydrate and that animal fat product, otherwise known as saturated fat, but when you eat saturated fat, uh, meaning you eat pig, that's called saturated fat, but if you eat it and your carbohydrates are low, it's called an unsaturated fat, which is totally confusing, right? But they are omega-6 fats, they are very healthy, they are what keep your blood vessels and blood skin cells 
and red blood cells, very flexible, very healthy, very plump. But if you add carbohydrates, like I just did in this uh, situation here, and you eat it in a place where your blood sugars are high, or even just that you eat it with other carbohydrates routinely, you took that, that um, saturated fat from the pig, and instead of making it into a healthy omega-6, it stays a saturated fat. And saturated fats are high in patients that have heart disease. Uh, those saturated fats stay in their cell linings. They stay in their, the linings to their blood vessels. And when patients first show up on a ketogenic diet and say, Doc, how can you eat all that bacon? Uh, what do you mean eat bacon without any carbohydrates? Uh, why do I need to do it that way? And it is specific to looking at when you put saturated fats from animals into a human body, but there's really high blood sugars around, or there's just an excessive amount of carbohydrates, you will turn them, you will not turn them into the healthy side of unsaturated fats. Instead, you'll keep them as saturated fats. Okay, hang in there. I know this gets a little confusing, but I'm gonna do it one more time. So here's our little pig. Our pig is covered in maple syrup. That's all that sugar. And when you do that, you take an unsaturated fat, an omega-6, and we got a report here in a minute that I'm going to show you that omega-6 is from eating bacon without carbohydrates, eating fat without carbohydrates. Um, if you do it without carbohydrates, it stays an omega-6, and you get to use that in your blood vessels, in your lining of your red blood cells. But if you put it in with carbs or you have high carbohydrates, uh, you run the risk of turning them into the saturated fat, which does have a predictor for heart disease. All right, so if you're totally confused, hang in there. We are going to unpack this uh, in my own blood test here in just a minute. So let's go back and do some easy things. So here's it. We're inside our, our bone marrow. We're making our red blood cell. We've sprinkled in some of the saturated fats. We've sprinkled in some of the monounsaturated fats with our avocado oil. And now we're going to add in some of our pig. And we ate this pig without any carbohydrates or low carbohydrates. So it is being used as an omega-6 fat, which is very flexible, which allows your skin to look resilient, which allows blood vessels uh, to have a lot more give and take instead of being hardened or stiff. Uh, so we've got our, our, pig, <laughs> our pig fat inside our red blood cells, and we get to use that in a much healthier way. Okay, let's keep going. So this is um, just a little bit. We got our saturated fats. Uh, we've already taken care of those. That's our sugar. Uh, saturated fats highly associated with eating it with carbohydrates or having high blood sugar before you put uh, the fats in. We had our monounsaturated ones. We've already covered that. And then um, our polyunsaturated fats. And then remembering that as we look at a polyunsaturated fat, our omega-6 are one of the two uh, um, categories for these polyunsaturated fats. And it's those polyunsaturated fatty acids that are essential. The rest of these, not essential. Your body can make them. But when it comes to the essential fats, meaning you can't make them, you have to eat them. When a ve vegetarian or a vegan comes to my clinic and says, you know, what is it that I need to watch out for? It, it is these fats, the origin of these fats, that become the key component to building many other compartments within that, uh, that vegan or vegetarian. You cannot make them within the hu human body. You must eat them. All right. So here we go. We're going to look at our fish um, is our next one. Again, our fish is PUFA. You might have guessed that uh, people hear about, you know, if you're going to be on that ketogenic diet, you should eat a lot of fish. You should have high fish oil. You should supplement with fish oil. And indeed, that is all true. But what they're really trying to say is we know that cells and bodies that use polyunsaturated fat fatty acids, these PUFAs, these unsaturated fatty acids, to build their blood vessels, to heal their brains, to make the hormones within your body, these components are linked to less brain disease, less um, depression, less heart disease, um, uh, not just uh, less diagnoses on the doctor's charts, but a resilience that is highly associated with how many of these good fats, these unsaturated omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids is your body using to build this next generation of cells to keep you healthy and alive and hopefully repair any of those uh, areas that haven't been so healthy. So 
Again, polyunsaturated fatty acids, just in case you need me to say it one more time. And here's our little twinkle for all of the fishy, uh, the omega-3 fats that are found in the skin cells uh, of this red blood cell that we're building. So here we are back in that bone marrow. We've already built a lot of parts of our of our uh, skin layer there. We're gonna add the fish into there and you can now start to see the structure that uh, again, took a little time to put this together but is a beautiful representation to say, you are building a red blood cell by what you eat and what is your chemistry doing during the time that you're eating. Mm. All right, <clears throat> so if we move on um, our next little uh, section is uh, the egg. <laughs> so you cannot be on a ketogenic diet without talking about eggs. So I specifically put this in because the truth is people will talk about, I want you to eat foods that are high in omega-3s and you know not so many of the omega-6s. And I don't agree with all that. I'll show you why in just a minute. Um, but the truth is, is that pigs, <laughs> like our bacon, has a lot of omega-6s, but it does have omega-3. And fish have a lot of omega-3s, but they do have omega-6s. They almost always travel together. I mean, I actually can't think of one component of food that has only omega-6 or only omega-3 that is in nature that some chemist didn't monkey with. So an egg is a great representation of both omega-3 and omega-6, as are most foods on the ketogenic diet. Uh, they are heavier in omega-6s if you're from the upper Midwest uh, like I am, um, but uh, you can find uh, a balance of both of them. So once again, this is PUFO. I'm just talking about both the unsaturated fats that are in the omega-3s, those are our fish, and the omega-6, that's our bacon and our beef, um, and those are overgeneralizations. But here's just a, uh, another sprinkling of where did the egg part of this uh, skin cell end up. And we added that to our overall building process. We are back in the bone marrow. We're going to add some egg to our uh, lining of the skin that we're building for this red blood cell. And again, this is happening inside your body right now. It's happening inside my body. And if I look at my red blood cells, I could see how well did I do at eating foods with the right chemistry in place over the past three months. And the way I do that is because those red blood cells only last about 90 to 100 days, so they last about three months. So we can look to see how well are the red blood cells doing that I made today, as well as the ones that are about to die, that are about at the end of their life expectancy. Okay, so we saved the bad boy for last. Uh, he is the devil, because it really is devilish that these are in your body at all. Uh, trans fats are actually they are not essential. <laughs> Your body does not make them. In fact, trans fats are found in the man-made fats that are a huge, um, um, almost a, my generation of fake butters and uh, fats that sit on a shelf and they last a long time. So they, and they're made to taste like butter, but they really are built from specific types of fats that are kind of crusty. They're not, they're not like your omega-6 and your omega-3. They're not plump. They're not flush. They aren't stretchy. They're stiff. And they're highly associated with inflammatory problems. In fact, if I wanted to predict who's got the highest risk of heart disease, having a heart attack in the next four to six weeks, looking at the trans fats that they have inside their body would give me a better idea than looking at your total cholesterol. Let's take a, close, a closer look. So here's our inflammatory guys. That's the devil. Um, I did sprinkle him throughout here too. Uh, and <clears throat> the skin lining of that was, um, yeah, plenty tainted by the evil. <clears throat> the evil devil. All right, here we go. So here's our bone marrow. We've got all the good guys in there right now. But uh, we are going to add in the devil. Uh, and those are the trans fats. And what I like you to notice is that those trans fats, this is a this is a lining that goes all the way around that cell. When when you see that cut open things, I have I've cut off an edge of the cell so you can see the top uh, layer of skin and you can see the bottom layer of skin. Right here I focused in on only that top layer of skin, but it is a mosaic. It is like a quilt built from which fats are are in the bone marrow and being used to supply the body with the tools to make the red blood cells for 
for today, for tomorrow. So there's our red blood cells uh, showing off where they're at, just kind of hidden throughout that mosaic. Um, but it's not just one layer, it is, a, it is a depth and it goes all the way around that red blood cell. Um, what I like to notice is if you look at how stiff our red blood cells are, or our trans fats are, they really have a rigidity. Um, one of the predictors of a heart attack is linked tr to trans fats because these red blood cells are known for being very pliable and squishy and they are, um, they're, they're kind of a discoid shape with kind of like a, a tire on the outside and, a, and, and in the middle kind of in, indents a little bit. And as you look at that cell, it's meant to morph and squeeze and fit through tiny openings. And it's actually one of the predictors that we want that red blood cell if if the blood supply gets really tiny, uh, that the arteries start to clog, healthy red blood cells should be able to squeeze through those tiny openings to the other side, unless they have a bunch of trans fats in them. If the trans fats are there, the red blood cell is too stiff and it cracks, at which point it clots. And that links highly to that heart attack, that blocked artery. Uh, those trans fats are naughty. When you look at what they do, also they create a lot of inflammation. The higher your number of trans fats inside those red blood cells, uh, the higher number inside your arteries, inside your brain. Uh, it isn't just the cells in our bone marrow that are using these to build the parts of the body. Um, every cell is using fat to create the skin lining around the outsides of those cells. Red blood cells just happen to be easy to, access, to assess, to have access to, and we can study which fats ended up in that red blood cell. So um, I think I repeat it here just to show you. There's our, there's our um, evil, um, uh, <laughs> our evil uh, trans fats that's the devil. And in that Im image, I'm just trying to say, it, the more of those trans fats you get rid of, uh, the less that you put them in your system, uh, the better off you are. Uh, and so if I was going to say, who is, um, who's at the highest risk for this heart attack uh, when they're on a ketogenic diet? I want to know, what are your trans fats? How many of them are in the cells you've got right now? And as you replace and turn them over, how well are you doing at avoiding those trans fats? In the same aspects, I want to know um, when we look at uh, the different places where uh, saturated fat comes into your diet. Uh, saturated fat is what is found in a pig and in bacon and in meat. But if you have that saturated fat in the setting where sugar was also around, carbohydrates were high, your body does something much different with that with that fat molecule in the setting of high sugar and in, in the setting of inflammation than it does when you use uh, a low carbohydrate high fat situation. So here we have just to show off there's your monounsaturated fats all of our avocados bouncing up to show where they're they're at and then I show you where all of your uh, uh, fat based animal fat omega sixes the fish are your omega threes and then finally um, our eggs get to show off a little bit that they have of course like most foods omega six and omega threes all of those are healthy sides of uh, the the blood cell. We've removed all of the trans fats from this guy's red blood cell. We still do have some saturated fats and although there will always be some of those in the system, it's actually normal to have them. It's just that when they are the only ones around and there's an excess of those because of the high blood sugars when putting fat into the system, that's when we start to get this conversation that's been around for 30 years saying, oh, saturated fats are bad. Yeah, if they are the major and predominant fat in your cells, if that's what your body's using to make cells because that's all you're giving it is a high carbohydrate setting and the types of fats are not uh, in, a, in a place where the inflammation and sugar are low, you're causing a different blood cell lining. You're, you're making different skin cells. Okay, so as I look at um, a few uh, just punchlines here, I'm just going to show you that omega-6, omega-3, omega uh, this is one of those slides where if you need a screenshot for the summary lessons, this is really what it is. You're looking at essential fats being your polyunsaturated ones and your non-essential ones being your monounsaturated fats. That's where things get a little tricky. And 
to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about because it is a very powerful thing. When patients come in and say, I want a cholesterol test done, I will cringe a little bit because it's not going to tell me what they want to know. They want to know what's your risk of a heart attack? What's your risk of um, having that unforeseen moment where chest pain takes over, uh, a stroke happens, a cardiovascular event uh, is the you know, is their destiny because of uh, several markers. And a cholesterol panel is just not going to teach me what you need what you need to know. So let's take a look at um, the place where you can get this test done. So uh, in the show notes, you'll find this, Omega Quant. Um, also, if you go to bosmd.com and click on favorites, uh, you'll see that I've put uh, that Omega Quant test is a very effective way for you Keep me out of it. You do this yourself. It is a point of care test done at home. Uh, and it's because all I need is the skin from your red blood cells. I need, just like I poked my finger at the beginning of the show, I need you to poke your finger and give me enough red blood cells that I can study how did you make them for the last three months. And this predictor allows me inside the choices you've been making for the last three months. And it shouldn't be me. It should be you. You should know what your choices have been. Uh, we don't have a way to measure trans fats any other way except one of these skin cell tests. Uh, so let's take a closer look at that. Um, let's see. Here we go. I want to look at this. So this is uh, one of the kits inside that um, it's just the instructions inside that uh, website. When, when you look at um, uh, the omega-3 quant test, you'll pick shop or you can just pick how does it work. Um, but I want to just show you quickly how um, how this is set up and they do a great, oopsie, wrong, wrong button. There we go, that's what I was trying to do. Okay, so if you look, the, the kit has this A, B, C, D, E, and F up there and really it's instructions, but I'm going to walk through it because I don't want anybody being overly intimidated by this. I have patients do this all the time and I tell them, you know, it's important that I, mean, I could order it, I could send you over to their, their place, I could have a kit delivered to your house, I could have my nurse do it. But what's very powerful is when they're doing it at home, usually someone else is being taught. So it's just a very quick uh, example to show you that you um, prick, the, prick your finger um, with the little lancet that they give you. Uh, and so that's that figure three right there. Is, uh, it's a spring-loaded, you can't really screw it up. Um, but then you'll notice that in figure four, you're touching uh, that drip of blood uh, onto a sponge or it's really kind of like a thickened piece of paper until you have enough blood to fill in this circle. You let it sit there to dry for a good 10 minutes. Uh, you snap it closed, put it in the mail, and they give you a report on what is inside your, your red blood cells. So in February of this past year, so that's a good six months ago now, I had, um, I had my test done. So I'm going to show you the results. I've tried showing these before, but it did not work out so well. So I've got it a little better organized this time. So it is time for me to retest. So I thought I would do a really good job of showing you where was I six months ago and what did I learn about my choices. So again, um, February of 2020 is when this was, <laughs> right before I, I got quarantined in Hawaii for three months, which you'd think I'd have had a whole bunch of fish. Uh, let's see how that works out for me. So my index, my total index number is 4.3. Um, if you look at this bar along the bottom, what, what you can see is I'm in the red-yellow area, which is not the best number. Uh, these, um, uh, what, what an index shows you is we really want you having more of these fish fats, um, these omega-3 fats, as opposed to the number uh, related to your uh, omega-6. Now, I have had some great uh, talks, and, and I uh, love the guy who has uh, the brains behind this, Dr. Harris. Uh, Dr. Harris is, um, he actually was one of my teachers in medical school. So when I found this test, when I heard about this test, um, and then I've heard it on the Fat Emperor, I've heard it on uh, several of the ketogenic um, um, lipidology panels, studying how do you look at what is going on with the fats today in this in this period of time in this three month block and I was super embarrassed to find that this cool test is done in my 
own hometown of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So I swallowed some humble pie, called up Dr. Harris and says, I need you to come to my keto group and teach all of us, including me, how the test works and what's the data behind it. And of course, I'd already read about it by the time he came, but it was amazing uh, to have him present. And he also agrees that as much as the index is a really uh, helpful way to to watch, if you can get that up into the seven or even an index of eight, it says you have lots of, um, of those um, omega-3s and omega-6s present. So that, that really is looking at a ratio between the omega-3s and omega-6s. Um, and again, this is the part where when I showed him my, that N6 and N3 is my omega-3s and omega-6 compared to each other. So omega-6 is that uh, pig fat. <laughs> the, uh, the ones had, uh, I didn't convert them to, tran to uh, saturated fats. They stayed omega-6s. I ate them in a time where my sugar was low. But the amount of fish that this hog farmer's daughter <laughs> eats is not as much as it should be. <laughs> so my ratio is, is pretty representative of what it is that I eat, which is I eat animal products that I grew up on and I have access to. But what I really want people to notice is, and again, Dr. Harris and I have talked about how powerful it is to look at people's trans fats. Again, trans fats um, only come from the food you eat. There is a caveat to that, that there are a few bacteria that can ferment some things and give you a couple of trans fats. So we don't expect it to be zero, but uh, you can't make it. Um, it comes from this partially hydrogenated liquid uh, vegetable oils and they are really gnarly. They do stiffen your red blood cells. They increase inflammation within your body. They are linked to heart disease. And really the only way to measure them is to prick your finger and send off the postcard uh, to get your results. Um, when I look a little further though, I'm gonna show you, and there's that caveat just saying there's a, there, is a, um, there is a bacteria that's actually in some dairy products that can give you a little bit, a little bit. You cannot blame most of your trans fats on that though. Uh, so here's some things that you should pay attention to and that I did a little better on. When you look at the overall diet that I was consuming in February, again, I've been keto for five years by that point, um, and I look at if you can get your linoleic acid, uh, which is one of the fatty acids, that's the omega-6, if you can get that above 24, it is a sign of resilient repair. Meaning if I had a head injury, if I got a concussion, and I would want to measure how quickly could I repair that, does my body have the supplies to take and resiliently repair the human injury? Uh, the answer is yes. That linoleic acid of above 24 is a, is a good marker of it. The other things we want to be low are we want your palmitoleic acid to be low. This is one of the monounsaturated fatty acids. So this would be one of the folks under the avocado, those healthy fats that I, I don't eat those pig fats, Dr. Bosworth. I eat just the olives and I eat avocado oil. I just, I only eat healthy fats. And this drives me crazy because I need you to eat fat in the absence of carbs. That is what makes it healthy. When you look at... Uh, Palmitoleic acid, it is a fatty acid that's highly associated with fat consumed when you have high carbohydrates or when you have a higher blood sugar. Uh, this is, again, we want it, anything under one is great, so 0.5 is pretty good. Um, last but not least is we look at our saturated fatty acids. And I said, remember, saturated fatty acids are ones you can make, and you can make them um, by consuming animal fat, and if the animal fat is in the setting of high glucose or high inflammation, it will take it and you will find a saturated fat in that skin cell. But there are other ways that your body does make those, and you will always find some saturated fats in your bone marrow, in your blood cells. You just shouldn't have an overabundance of it. So the one number we like people to look at is right there at that palmetic uh, palmitic uh, acid, and if you get 21 or less, we like it under 22, uh, so 21 or less is great. Over 21 <laughs> is uh, where we like them to hone down. You've got you to cut back on your carbs somewhere, uh, and you can see that I'm at 21.04. So yeah, this was February, and I'm due to recheck, so we'll see how that turns out.
Uh, most importantly though, the trans fats and the ratios that I had for those are really what uh, I get to uh, just make sure to slow down and say that really is where uh, the focus should be is how many trans fats do my red blood cells have in them and how many do yours have in them. So again, these are just some of the things I mentioned earlier. These are, are outlined in all of um, the reports that come there. And of course, uh, the last thing they like to show you is uh, that EPA DHA. If you scroll back to and look at that last screen slide, I talked about the different types of uh, fat that come from fish and how, uh, how that looks in these different types of foods. This is in every one of their reports. Um, these are, again, uh, when you look at the, the major list for trans fats, think of man-made fat that is wonderfully <laughs> concocted to taste like fat uh, and look like fat, but is really not a flexible oil. Uh, it stays hard at room temperature when it should be a liquid. Uh, it, is not, um, it is not what we like to see in the human body, and we can measure that. But... Um, I also like to, to uh, say, okay, so you get this report and you have this list of foods that aren't so uh, great. But one of the other places that I send patients all the time uh, is the Chronometer app. We talk about this in the course as one of these tools that helps me, an internal medicine doctor, if you have a problem on the ketogenic diet and you're looking for somebody to help you, like the physician. <laughs> and we all know that we've got like a couple months at most, I mean a couple lectures at most of nutrition in medical school. So you have to kind of be a geek about it to know more about the nutrition-based answers uh, in the real world. The average physician, and even when I study them for, I love this stuff, uh, I look into it and I try to know enough for my patients to, you know, when is it working out? When is, what should they do next? But I am nothing <laughs> without the Chronometer app. And it really just is the best database for studying the foods that are going in you. Um, but I like to show just how this works. So this is the chronometer app. If you click on uh, the foods category here, um, under foods, there's this thing called Ask the Oracle. Uh, now, one thing you can do with Ask the Oracle is if you're trying to stay under the 20 total grams of carbohydrates per day and you've got only a few <laughs> grams left, you can say, Ask the Oracle, what could I eat and still be in my safe zone for carbs? Um, but the other thing that the Ask the Oracle does is if I want to study fat, but specifically you can go through here. I actually really like um, showing people how to look up iron, uh, iron supplement. Uh, so iron is one of those um, issues that when, when you get low on it, you cannot repair a brain when you are iron deficient. Iron deficiency will haunt people. But you could look up, the Oracle could tell you the top 25 ketogenic iron um, foods to eat. And um, yeah, so you get raw mushrooms, you get basil, you get goose liver. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think they put Braunschweiger on there, but that's one of my favorites. But uh, just to, as a way of teaching though, that's great. So if you said, I want to know how could I get more omega-3 in my, in my diet, you could push omega-3 and then ask the Oracle to give you the top 25 omega-3 fats. And actually, I, I, I did this one earlier saying, if you really look at flaxseed oil, I wouldn't use that one. I would go with the whole foods of your, your mackerel. Uh, even chia seeds had some good uh, omega-3s, but you got your fish, your mackerel. I'm sure sardines are on here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there they are, uh, number 18. Uh, so again, some good suggestions there. Um, but let me show you the one that I really think is super uh, educational, which is what happens when you click on trans fats. I think it is, uh, I think you have to go to fat first, right? Oh, right there it is, trans fats, there you go. Um, so trans fats, and then you say, give me the top 25. <laughs> and I think that it's, I don't know if it's funny, but it's very true that popcorn, whatever butter they put on popcorn is awful. I'm pretty sure all of my trans fats come from the popcorn that I snitch from my husband when we're at a movie theater. But I guess thanks to COVID, I haven't been to a movie theater in so long. I, like, I should have no trans fats because that's the only place I could think. Where would I be getting any trans fats? Like, how do I have any of them in my 
uh, system. But it just is a great way to say, I wonder if this food has that in there. Um, Chronometer app is one of the, it's a free app. Uh, you can do the pro if you want to, but you get a lot for the free part of it. And it really is this amazing educator uh, if you're on the ketogenic diet. So uh, let's go back to here and say, all right, so that process of uh, unpacking the ketogenic diet's uh, answer of, Doc, if I want to know what my cholesterol is, um, how, er, do I have a risk for a heart attack? Um, what fats should I be looking at? What should the panel have? And the answer is, it probably shouldn't have uh, a lipid profile, a total cholesterol. That doesn't give me anything. It really doesn't teach me anything for how I need to be addressing where is the inflammation inside your system. However, knowing what your trans fats are and knowing how you've progressed in the last three months, 90 days, uh, gives me, you know, it's a test way better than, um, even when I look at the calcium scores, hold on a second, for the um, calcium of uh, coronary artery calcium scores, I love those, I learn a lot from those as well, but that's really the snapshot for the last 10 years. Uh, it, it is not, how have you been doing in the last three months? You know, getting that coronary artery calcium score to change, there's a lot of talk about that, but the evidence for how well did you make your red blood cells in the last three months and which types of fats did you use to build them? Now that's concrete, that's something you can follow and you do not need the cost of a doctor to figure it out. You can order it yourself. I just think that's the way medicine is heading. Give patients the power, have a place where you can get educated and use it to empower their choices day to day. So that is my, my lecture on uh, how, do you, how do you judge somebody's ketogenic journey in the last three months. Um, fats are not all created equal. Let me actually do a quick little adjustment here and uh, take notice of several of the people. Okay, so um, I am looking at your comments, but I'm also going to uh, retest my numbers. I, I did want to say almost all the kids are headed back to school this week. I put uh, my oldest son into college yesterday uh, and can't believe how emotional that is even Though we, yeah, it's just what what a journey. Uh, I take our uh, daughter, our adopted daughter from China, to her college this week, and the other two boys are starting high school. We are South Dakota, so we have actual school that's happening. Thanks be to God. <laughs> but we are not leaving the house without checking thermometers, so uh, checking temperatures. So if you, for parents out there, I know that it doesn't catch everybody, but if you know what your child's temperature is usually. Uh, it still is one of those markers to say they're probably going to have the lowest amount of symptoms. Let's hope they have not been overweight yet. Let's hope their body is not inflamed and they don't have a pre-existing condition. Uh, but the one thing you can do as parents is check your temperature. So uh, this uh, is my favorite. I have one at the clinic. I have one, uh, yeah, even 99 here today. So still considered normal, but um, the uh, average for me is usually 98.9, 98.7, so 99 is still in my normal range. When you look at that, though, you as parents have the highest influence on your kids, so don't leave it all up to the teachers in the schools. If you're lucky enough to get to send your kids to school, check their uh, temperatures uh, before you leave. I am a, yeah, wear masks where you need to and check temperatures. I, oh, here we go. All right, so here's our little... Uh, we're going to put the purple purple one in uh, this one. We're going to put the white one in this one. Again, these are the exact same meter. I just used two of them to go a little faster. Uh, and I really do like Foracare. They have also <laughs> done a great job of supplying strips that don't go bad in the wintertime of South Dakota. All right, so here we go. It's all set up, and it's blinking away there. For, you can see that little drip of blood. Uh, that means it's set. 275 is just the code for this batch of strips. Uh, that code will change as I change um, batches of strips. This is the uh, glucose one. And again, you can see that little drip happening. And I did have ketones in the middle. So the ketones did go up a little bit. And the glucose is about the same. So I think it was 84 to 80. So about the same. But looking at, um, again, what does uh, your metabolic health look like? How well... 
will your bacon be received? <laughs> And that has to do with what are your numbers. Uh, ketogenic diet isn't what you eat. It is a chemistry that, uh, that pulsates throughout your system and correlates to an improvement in repairing the body, aging the body, and oh yeah, you might lose some weight. That's probably really common. But most importantly is the metabolic health that you are stimulating. So I hope you liked this one. I've been working on this lecture for probably five months now. So I would totally stick around and watch your comments after this. Um, if you haven't done the Omega-3 Index, uh, I love supporting that company. They have a couple of awesome things coming your way in the next year. And I just, I believe in supporting their innovation of quit putting barriers between patients and the tools they need to monitor their own health. Um, that's why I like the point of care things. That's why I talk about thermometers that measure a very hearty, um, um, uh, or very reliable numbers, and I try to support companies that are out there like uh, the Omega Quant family that is supplying you with your own tools to measure what are your trans fats, how many are in your red blood cells right now. All right, so uh, again, for those of you that like to follow me on Instagram, uh, I am trying to fast. I have given my, my mom, Grandma Rose, the gal that the book was uh, written about, she is on, I think, week four of uh, trying to hit a Dr. Boz ratio of 20 or less because she's really trying to spark autophagy of her bone marrow. I did great with her the first week, but I traveled for the past two weeks, so I did, I didn't, I only got down into the 30s and 40s, I think. Uh, so I just didn't hit, I didn't make it, so I failed. But I'm on the bandwagon again to try and do it with her again and be supportive of her as she walks through a journey. Again, I don't like fasting any more than anybody else. I am just as tempted by food and I have teenagers that need supper made. Uh, but uh, the power of um, uh, you know, sacrificing for those that are really working to improve their health. Uh, and I do try to post my numbers. I keep it honest. When I fail, you see it right there on Instagram. So if you like watching it, uh, uh, follow me on Instagram. Otherwise, check in with me every Sunday night right here for lectures on the ketogenic diet and how to improve your health one ketone at a time. I'm signing off as Dr. Boz. We'll see you next week.